Hi, this is Kevin Graham at KG Now here at Display Week 2018 in downtown Los Angeles. I'm with Michael Vestal with Nova Centis, and this is going to be exciting. So, hello, Michael. How are you? I'm great. How's the show going? It's been a really good, good week. Well, you guys are creating some buzz, so tell us about your stuff. Yeah, literally. So we make the world's thinnest haptic actuator. Uh, it's about a square centimeter in area and about 150 microns in thickness. That's about the thickness of your hair. So this actuator, when we apply a voltage, it elongates. When we attach that to a substrate, it vibrates and it creates the sense of touch. And by creating the sense of touch, we're able to imitate different textures in virtual reality worlds. We're able to create the um, uh, notifications that people are looking for to bring what used to be in the display off board and start to communicate through the body and through the skin. So computers are now able to talk to humans through audio and visual. We're bringing the sense of touch as a, a modality. And we call that the haptic language. That's innovative. The user experience, not through the display, but through the feeling. That's right. And tell me about the use cases. Where do you see this being adopted? Right, so we, we think there are about three use cases that we're really running after. We're looking for large volume because we're a large volume manufacturing company. We're making, uh, we're looking for hundreds of millions of products to be sold. So we're doing a roll to roll process and we're bringing that online now. Uh, the three main use cases, virtual reality, augmented reality, these are areas where you want that sense of touch to bring the immersion really to life. And we're starting to do that. We've done demonstrations where we hold balloons and we roll them around our hand. And you get a really good feeling for what that act, uh, what the object feels like. And that makes the immersive experience more real. In the past, people break the immersive experience by passing through their hand through an object. That's ghosting, right? When your hand touches an object and suddenly you get that response, you no longer want to break the immersion experience and it brings it to life. Another really important use case is in controllers and uh, gaming devices, remote controls for TVs, things like this. So hard embedded products where you might have a skin and the uh, button might disappear and a haptic actuator would tell you you've pressed a button and you've done what you want or maybe it would give a different effect. The same button would say, well, I didn't get that and it would say uh, with a different style of a vibration, you would be notified, oh, you know, redo that at input. Uh, so we're starting to uh, develop uh, actuators like that. And the third use case is in wearables. So clothing, uh, maybe uh, gloves for the VR world, uh, notifications, a heart rate monitor, maybe uh, navigation uh, to help you know where you are in the city, pointing north all the time. There have been use cases where that's been a really positively demonstrated uh, approach. Very interesting. I don't think words do it justice. I'm not sure showing it'll do it justice, so we're going to try. So Novacentis' world's smallest actuator is this. It's 150 microns. It's about the thickness of a hair. When we apply a voltage, the actuator actually elongates. When you attach that to a substrate, the actuator turns into a vibrating motion. When you add constraints, you get a drumhead style actuator integration, and this is what we actually call our integrated actuator. When you put your finger on this, you'll feel vibration, and depending on the wave file, which is like a sound file, this speaker-like actuator can feel differently. So, for example, I can imitate my hand running across a, a surface of cobblestones, and I can do that at different speeds, and each one of those will provide different haptic effects. I can play a heartbeat on this. It's one of our most compelling effects, and it feels very much like a heartbeat. So we download these different files and are able to play audio files, much like a speaker, because our actuator responds over a large frequency range and produces those nuances. So low frequencies provide really rich feelings. The higher frequencies give you the nuances of the effects, and you're able to distinguish between one effect and another to create that haptic language. Thank you. So check this out. We probably already showed you some of it while we're talking, but this is Kevin Graham at KG Now. Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.